We got a new interview here. It's called, I Talked to the Chicago Coquane Twins. That's what it says. I might speed the video up a little bit so we get through it quicker with uh, less, you know, space in between. A boom uh, with no uh, video, just audio right now because the guest, Margarito Flores, also known as Jay, short for Junior, um, is preferring not to show his face because he was a cooperator with the U.S. government again. Again, someone asked earlier if I believed that the twins would come on my channel without covering their face, and it's like, no, nah, I don't think so. I don't. They have no reason to. If they don't do it for congressmen. I don't expect them to do it for me. And you know, I'm not in the business of exposing nobody. Uh, anyway, against Sinaloa cartel. Against El Chapo. He said, don't tell out the secrets, Jay. Right. We're going to hold them. If I, boy, we're going to hold them to these stories. Boy. We'll be like, damn, you, you gave dude this story right here? Damn. No, nah, we're not like that. We don't give a shit. We're blessed with their time. It is what it is. Against Arturo Beltran Leva, against El Mayo. In fact, his evidence uh, was using indictments against more than 50 drug traffickers. But he was also a drug trafficker himself at a major level. He confessed along with his twin brother, Pedro Flores, also known as Pete, to trafficking more than 60 tons of cocaine, as well as heroin and crystal meth. If you're an American, if you're somewhere up on the East Coast, or in fact anywhere in the United States, and had a line of cocaine between... About 1998 and 2008, there's a very good chance it went through the Flores Twins organization. Uh, but now he is looking for redemption. He's done some time in prison, 12 years, as well as cooperating. Came out and is looking to try and change things. Now, in this conversation, you can find Margarito around other places. A lot of you will be familiar with him from other places. Now he's been more of a media presence. This conversation is more of a uh, candid, casual talk. Uh, I got in touch with him and he was very generous with his time. You know, what became a short conversation turned into a long conversation. And so this is this is that that talk. What was it like in Chicago, growing up in Chicago, and that first links into trafficking and to linking up with the biggest players in Mexico? Oh, for the most part, um, you know, since before I was born, I think that the Sinaloa cartel or whatever the cartel was at the time always had their links into, you know, a city like Chicago, I think as migrants and Mexicans started actually migrating into Chicago, you know, for most people that don't know, I was like born into this, right? Uh, uh, when I was born, actually, my father was in prison. He was a drug trafficker, a big drug trafficker who worked with different organizations. And, you know, he was a big heroin dealer who was uh, arrested for, uh, you know, 11 kilos of black tar heroin at the time, received a 10 year sentence. And uh, after a good time, he, he was, he came home when I was around seven, seven and a half. And that was my introduction to the drug trade through my father. At an early age, he started teaching me and my brother, you know, the business of drug trafficking. You know, we ran our first load across the border at before we were eight years old. You know, wow. wow. So, so, so when you went up, you went down with him to Mexico, and you were like, "What? He was driving in a car over the border? Or how did he get over?" Oh, uh, so yeah, we actually thought it was a vacation. We went uh, to Mexico on our you know first trip out of Chicago. You know, we were you know my father was in prison, and you know we had a hard life. You know, we were very poor. You know, my family was on. on uh, government assistance at the time so uh, he came home and he was a provider at heart you know he was used to having money and and he felt I guess it was like his obligation to you know provide and provide money fast so we took the you know it was a small car took the road to Mexico uh, it was a, it was a fun experience for my brother and I for sure um went down to Mexico and basically at that trip he actually took us out to the mountains and basically introduced us to our first drug which was going to be marijuana and we um, he took us through every step where we were, you know, a part of the, you know, cultivating of the harvesting, right? Picked out which plants he wanted. You know, we had to let them sit and dry out and all that stuff and compress the marijuana at that time. You know, some kids go fishing with their dad. Some kids, you know, go camping. Some kids don't have a dad at all. And some go and cultivate a, a, a bud field with their father at like seven years old and then uh, package it and push it and, uh, Use children to manipulate border marshals and shit. It's a crazy story. Mike Jones, they pops was a stand-up dude and it cost him. That's not how shit's supposed to work. Mm. Was he a stand-up dude? What do we know about him? We're going to find out more as the story's told, I'm sure. But what do we know? 
Was he stand up? We know a couple of things. I know he utilized one of his kids to go ask for somebody to, to, to bait somebody out of a house that he wanted to get. Somebody that ratted on him. I know that. Is that the same as, as being in a shootout and using his child as a shield? I don't know. But was he a stand up dude? I don't know. They, he said he was a provider, but yeah, that's a, he's a provider by any means, right? We make saints out of everybody when we're on one side of the story. I don't know. I don't know if he's a saint. Rest in peace, Pops. Yeah, rest in peace to him. You know, it was 220 pounds, I believe. And that and was in Sinaloa, or where was that in Mexico? No, at that time, we actually went, it was, we went to the, to the uh, mountains in what was considered the Zacatecas, Durango, right? That area, on this side of it. Um, and, you know, my father at that time had, you know, knew many people, and that's our, I guess that's where our education started. Um, we, he taught us how to, you know, take down the gas tank, and uh, we... We fished out the, you know, the gas, I mean, the drugs, right? The gas from the gas tank and, and we're witness and help them in every part of it. And that's what was going to be the next, you know, that's what going to be our job for the next, you know, three to four years, I think. Uh, and um, we took our, our first ride back up to the United States. When, when we actually got to the border, it was going to be our first time we were interrogated by federal officers. I tell everyone, my dad and my, my mom didn't bring our birth certificates on our first trip. And my father had, you know, 220 pounds of, of, of marijuana hitting a gas tank with no birth certificates <laughs> from my brother and I. So of course, you know, uh, Custom Border Patrol uh, sent us to a second inspection, but we were twins that, you know, me and my brother twins, we looked alike at that time, you know, there's not a lot of twins. We were still like a big deal that we looked so much alike. And um, they took separated from our parents and my father, I, I always recall this. It was the first time I actually like remember like not understanding something when he said, don't say nothing. Like I knew exactly what he meant, but he was worried that they were gonna separate us, right? And they, didn't, they didn't think to search for the marijuana. They didn't think to search. The no, but my, I remember seeing my father. It was like a, you know, where they, they inspected the cars. It was like an office and it had glass. It was all glasses. And I could see my father pacing back and forth. What was it like? I mean, did you consider, I mean, when you're like eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old doing that stuff, did you kind of think I'm not like a regular kid here in school? My life's a bit of a kind of crazy movie? Or, or, or what, how did you process that as a kid? Oh, wow. Having that experience compared to everyone else in your class who's like, you know, yeah, I, you know what? That's a good question. I can explain this to the committee a little bit. You know, I didn't have your regular childhood. I'm not saying I had, the, I was the only one, but at that time, growing up in, in the States, even growing up in a place like Little Village, it's a, it's a working class neighborhood. We were different even early on because everyone had their mom and their dad. You know, we still have that generation of Mexicans that don't believe in divorce. People went to work every day. Our dad being in prison was still rare. Like, so we were already kind of like, mm, treated a little bit different because of that. But, you know, I have older brothers and ignorance, right? You know, what gang culture was like. Uh, all his friends, the whole neighborhood basically would hang out at our house when we were kids because there was no father to, you know, say no. Or, you know, my mom just would be like, okay, this is what friends do. And, uh, and that's kind of started the trend of like our family being looked at a little bit different, right? You know, to other families who come from Mexico, right? Settle down there, go to work every day. And here's this house, right? That's rare. There's no They had the chill house. A lot of kids and kids that have friends and a lot of kids be in the house, they had the popping house on the block till the old man came home. So get your bum asses out of here. You two come with me. Chuck and Chingong said, uh, Jay don't want to bow out gracefully. Uh, you won. Why keep poking the bear? Yeah. Which one's the bear though? Is the cartel the bear? Is it still considered like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to shut them down. As far as he's concerned, he said it. he's on the other side of it. He's on the other side. He's on this side of it. If you ask me, uh, if you allowed him the opportunity to be full on law enforcement, he'd be full on law, law enforcement. You know what I mean? He chose his side. Now, are they? do they be trying to kick his ass, his side, this side? The, the American government, the U.S. government? Absolutely. You see, he said it himself. He goes and does these trainings and run into, runs into cops that were at his house, you know, arresting his wife and, and, and you know, putting his kids in, in, in fear and danger, you know? And he still runs into these guys. And he still trains them, and he don't feel no, you know, he tries not to feel no ill will to each his own, I guess. What else could he do, though? He could do like his brother, right? Just have a business, some kind of business, and do something, right? Instead, he's talking to congressmen, he's talking to, you know, so I, I hear you. When you're amb as ambitious as they were in the game, I don't know that that stops when you get out the game, you know? I think he, uh, he, he Frank Abig nailed himself, you know? Hey, let me help you. Let me help you. Like Frank Abagnale was helping them with the forgeries. And let me let me undo what I did 
again, every person's uh, redemption is their own. So one perspective is, yes, he's poking a bear and should have left one well enough alone. I mean, they could have left well enough alone all the way, right? Like, they could have just anonymously went off into the witness protection program and nobody ever hear from them. Nobody ever hear their side of the story. None of that. And then it'd be left for everybody else to tell their story. So evidently they chose otherwise. They chose to do it themselves. You know? Chuck e. Chico said best dealer, now best cop. And I think he sees it that way too, dog. Yeah, Chuck e. like just disappeared. Like, listen, people want to defend themselves to the chat. People want to defend themselves to each other and, and all of this. But the, the easiest way to avoid that is just obscurity. Right? But no, you gave us your story. You gave the audience your story. Don't, don't, don't tell nobody that they're in your business because you gave it out. To incite a reaction. That is what entertainment is for. That is what art is about. A reaction, good or bad, indifferent or otherwise, is the purpose of it, right? You're telling your story to get a reaction, so don't be mad at the reaction that you get. Otherwise, you could have just dipped off into, into obscurity. You know, he, he chose his redemption, what his redemption is, is going to be. He said himself. Somebody said in the chat jokingly that he's going to have one of those uh, southbound checkpoints named after him. And he said, that's the goal. He made his choice. He's not sugarcoating it. You know, he's letting it be known. Chuck and Chico say, yep, I feel they're getting really comfortable. That's what'll get them caught up. We'll see. You know, there's other dudes that are out there comfortable too. I'll be seeing them. Again, like they said before, you you when you're always when you've always been under the gun, you do what you can with what you got, and you can't be paralyzed over it. You gotta move. So I guess they move. Father, and there's a bunch of, you know, uh, teenagers that have a bunch of friends who are, you know, gang members. Now what and kind of Gang, what kind of gang were they in, and what gang were they in? And you never, you never got into the gang life yourself on that side of things. You know what, my, my brothers growing up, I mean, they were uh, what was considered probably the most violent, the most organized organization, which was the Lion Kings, and that's gonna play a big part on you know my brother's drug trafficking time. And uh, for, you know, we're talking about my you know seven, eight years old. So for sure, I was already you know kind of uh, living that part of the world where my brother was you know a Lion King. My brother's fifteen years older than me, you know. At that age, I still growing up, I'm, I'm basically being raised in that kind of culture, that, those environments. So by the time, you know, my father comes around, uh, him being in prison in the state, actually, he comes from, you know, being around gang members. Uh, so he uh, wasn't happy about it. He kicked my brothers out the house fast. It, was, it didn't take long. Like, what, what's going on? You know, like, he, he despised gang members, believe it or not. Uh, it, it's just this weird contradiction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he despised them because he was in prison with them. He didn't understand, you know you know, their reasoning or why they would, you know, have to, like what we consider in Chicago gangbang or whatever. But um, for instance, him coming home and kicking my older brothers out the house kind of pushed them away to having to provide for themselves now in a real manner, which led them to drug trafficking. And, and here I am, you know, you know, that separation between my older brothers and me and my uh, twin brother is like, he's giving us an education here and they're learning the cocaine business on the streets. Mike Jones said, and thanks to social media, we can have people talk about it and get everyone's perspective because it'll help us out. Again, yeah, they never had to tell their story. They could have just drifted off into obscurity, but now they're going to tell it that now they're telling it. They told in the podcast, told in the books. We're privy to, you know, the information that we get and, uh, and we follow the story, but to each his own, evidently. Uh, Brandon Heim said, it looks like when they set their mind on doing something, they go all in to the best of their ability. I mean, that's pretty much it he's he's gonna be the best law enforcement trainer that he could be in uh, you know in this subject that's what he's made the decision to do the, I think the gang culture being around in that vi environment uh taught my brother and i a lot it was gonna teach us how to succeed in, in in that environment later but we also never joined a gang you know my older brother that's something that he forbade us and and made sure he didn't uh, by the time i was 12 13 years old and my dad went on the run again left us where i was a brother he was already you know kingpin himself um in the listen man i can't honor a grown man that think it's a good idea to tell a kid that well even if he's been in the gang his whole life the, the grown man if you pushing the kids in the direction of gangs then i can't understand and comprehend your mentality you know uh we've gotten lost in, 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 to the point where we don't uh, condemn ourselves for the shit that we do. You got to want better for your kids than what you had. You got to want better for your kids than what the street offers them, you know? Otherwise, they're just a blink in time. They're out of here. Chucky Chingo said, just sucks. They took down people they started with, not just Chapo. Absolutely. 
I think they looked at it like everybody makes their decision. This is not no corporate situation. The end of this is two ways. The joint or this. So make a play for yourself. Make a play for yourself. Snitch on me. Snitch on everybody. Do your talking. There was some that did it. There was some that didn't. Does that make it any better? I don't know. It's not my, you know, not my place. All I know is why am I paying so much attention to that aspect of it when it's a tactic? What do I care if one of them is doing it when they're all doing it? It took the, the juice out the squeeze like, ah, oh, this is everybody's game. This is just what it is. Okay. I guess it's not that big a part of the story, but you're right. Well, they took friends down. Again, they probably feel like they, they gave them friends life too. Made them, made them rich for however long that they were. I don't know, but it does suck. Stay out of the life of crime. There is no loyalty. There is no, there is no honor amongst thieves. This, these things do not exist. All right? The will to survive trumps all of it. Are you going to find your dudes that are not going to say nothing and they're going to hold it down for 30 years? Yes. You're going to find those dudes too. Still not a great life. You know? So choose wisely.